Hey entrepreneurs, it's AJ and welcome back to the special series for Global Entrepreneurship Week where I'm sharing six of my very best entrepreneurial principles to help guide you through your own entrepreneurial journey, whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur, an aspiring entrepreneur, or perhaps even an employee thinking about starting the entrepreneurial journey. These six principles will help you uh, navigate the journey with less complexity or less complications, let's hope because you're still gonna have to do the work and go through the highs and the lows, but hopefully these principles will smoothen those rough bits out. Today is the last day in the series, and this principle is one that I hope that, uh, I hope it inspires you to, to challenge yourself, to dig deep and to get through and achieve your dreams and turn them into reality. Uh, one of the things that you'll find as entrepreneurs, as, as you grow through your entrepreneurial journey, is that we are completely practically delusional, right? I mean, it is completely delusional to think that we could pull out our phone, hit a button and summon up transport. Or it is completely delusional to pull out that phone and hit a button and all of a sudden food appears at our doorstep. It is completely delusional to think that we can pull out our phone, swipe on the screen and be suited with a potential life partner, right? Yet this is the world that we live in today. And that is the magic of entrepreneurship. So today's message is that entrepreneurs do whatever it takes to achieve the outcomes. And the story that I wanna share with you that, that sort of drives that message home is, uh, is something that I used to share on stage uh, when I was speaking to small business audiences. And, uh, and it's called Robert's Story. So if you've heard me speak about Robert's Story before, well, here it is again. So uh, Robert was this kid that I met when I was uh, started out my speaking career. And I used to speak at schools and universities on uh, youth motivation because there was a story about how I uh, started my consulting firm. So everyone wanted to know the story. So that's how I got started. So I'd finished a gig at my old high school and this kid comes up to me and goes, AJ, I love everything that you do. Uh, you're so amazing. You're so wonderful. Can I have a job? And I was like, no, you can't. And he goes, damn it. Well, can I get a photo then? I'm like, sure, we'll get the photo. So we took that photo. And that photo was a, a pivotal point in my life. And uh, yeah, it was a very interesting photo. So um, anyway, so I didn't hear anything from the kid whose name's Robert. And uh, anyway, so so six months go by and, and the teacher from the school rings me and says, hey, uh, do you remember that kid Robert? No, not really. Uh, you took the photo with him. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 what's the story? Uh, look, he's really struggling at school, he's failing school, and all he wants to do, AJ, is just get out there and work and get into an IT job, but because he's only 14, he's got no experience, and no one's going to give him a shot, AJ, would you have anything to offer him? I'm really sorry, I, I really wish I did, but I don't, but look, I remember this guy, is it worth me coming down to the, the school and having a chat with him, and maybe there's something I can, I can share that might change his way of thinking? That would be amazing. So cool, I went down, I spoke to Robert, and said, hey champ, you don't look like the dumbest person in this institution, why are you failing school? And he says, well, AJ, it's like this. Every week for maths, they take me out to the beach, down on the cliffside, and they give me a compass and a map, and they expect me to find my way back to the classroom. And I was like, well, what's wrong with that? Well, AJ, for the last six years, I've been in junior police rangers where they drop me into a forest and get me to find my way back to camp. And instantly I understood this kid's problem. His level of knowledge exceeded what he was being taught by the educational standard. And as a result, he was labeled a D student, a dysfunctional student, a delinquent student, a disengaged student, all because he knew more than what he was being taught. And that really resonated with me. So I said, hey champ, what do you wanna do? He goes, I love networking, I love building computers and connecting them all together. Hmm, interesting. Because, long story short, I was working on this project of my technology training center where I wanted to build this training center to help small business owners learn technology to grow their business. And part of that meant I needed to set up a computer lab and I didn't really want to set up all these computers. So old mate here solved that problem. All right, champ, well, why don't you come work for me on this project and, uh, and we'll see where it takes us. But I'm going to be hard on you, mate. That's cool. Be as hard as you want. 
So he comes in and I teach him how to think like an entrepreneur because he was a rough time at a 14 year old kid, right? He just had so much passion and desire. He just needed that little shape. So one of the things I taught him was how to think like an entrepreneur. And, and I said to him, look, whatever problems that you come to me, you always got to come with three different solutions. So I remember this one time we were building this, the, the lab and he'd come to me and goes, AJ, I'm having a problem with the imaging. I think it should be done in this way. And I was like, you really suck at maths, don't you? He goes, yeah. How many solutions is that? One. How many do I want? Three. So he went away and came up with two other solutions, right? Now, granted, he did have the right solution in the first place, but that's not what the exercise was about. Because in business and in life, in your career, everywhere, your first answer might not be the right one. So you've got to learn how to think differently, right? So I taught him how to think like an entrepreneur. And, and together we built this training center. We trained 120 business owners on technology. It was great. Then he started getting cocky. Like he was all that, you know? And I can't handle that. So I fired him, right? And, and it just didn't work out. So uh, that was the end of that. And a couple of months later, I, I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see this tweet. And it said, uh, you know, once upon a time, I used to work for this really amazing boss and um, I never understood what he was on about. And now I do. So thanks, AJ. Wow, cool. That was pretty cool. A couple of months later, he came into the office and he sees me and he says, hey, I just came to thank you. I'm like, what are you thanking me for, champ? He goes, I just signed my 100th client. I was like, you signed 100 clients? Even I don't have 100 clients. How did you do that? And he told me, and it was a pretty good story, pretty entrepreneurial story. I don't have time to tell you that story, but you'll have to catch the live version of Robert's story on stage. But uh, it was pretty special. So, you know, it shifted his thinking. Uh, a few months later, we caught up for lunch, you know, and, uh, and his phone keeps buzzing. I'm like, oh, you got some girls going, eh? And he goes, no, 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 they're clients. I'm like, oh yeah, how's business going? He goes, oh, it's a different business. I'm like, what happened to the other business? He goes, oh, that was just too hard. So I started another one. I'm like, well, what are you doing now? He goes, mobile phone repairs. I said, well, how did you start that? And he goes, well, stupid me dropped my phone, right? And then it was going to cost like 600 bucks to fix it. And I just don't have 600 bucks, AJ. I'm 15 years old, right? So I went online and I found a kit and I repaired my own phone. But stupid me put it on Facebook and now everyone wants me to repair their phone. And I said, are you making any money out of this champ? He goes, oh, a couple of grand. Is that per month? He goes, no, every week. What? Is that revenue or profit? And he goes, what's the difference? <laughs> like he's just 15 years old. A few years later, I catch up with him again. And, and he says to me, I'm off to South Korea. I'm like, why are you off to South Korea? He goes, AJ, that's the e-game sports place. You know, I, I, I want a slice of that $13 billion pie. I was like, damn, that's amazing, champ. So he's full on entrepreneurial. And now he's about 20 years old and I get this phone call from him and he sounds a little bit different. And he says, hey, AJ, listen, um, things are pretty rough right now and uh, I, I need to give up my business. My, my girlfriend's hassling me and the pressures of life and, you know, I just, um, I'm calling you to tell you that <sighs> I'm really sorry I, I let you down. I'm like, what are you talking about, champ? You haven't let me down at all. I always got your back. Listen, mate. Entrepreneurs do whatever it takes. So if you need to drop business and go get a job to survive, you do that. I always got your back. He goes, really? Thanks, AJ. I really mean that. Thank you. I'm like, got it back, bro. See you soon. Peace out. And uh, yeah, so he, um, you know, and, and he went off. And a couple of months later, I caught up with him. And I said, hey, champ, how's the job going? He goes, well, funny story. You know that thing that you told me about entrepreneurs do whatever it takes? I said, yeah. He goes, well, I looked at my business and I realized that I didn't have to shut it down. I could sell it. So I did. I'm like, you sold your business? Yep. What are you doing now? He goes, well, funny story. The guys that bought it off me, they don't know how to run an IT consulting firm. So they hired me back as a CEO. <laughs> and that, my friends, is an example of what it means to be an entrepreneur. Here's a kid that was failing in school because he had more knowledge than what was he, he was being taught. And all he needed was a little bit of help to guide him along that journey. And I'm proud to say he's a real entrepreneur. And I hope that you all learn from that story and you've learned these amazing techniques. Entrepreneurship is not a game, it's a way of life. And uh, I hope I've served you well in giving you a small glimpse of what my life and my journey has been like and I hope it serves you. 
My name is AJ Kalatunga. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I look forward to serving you on my next series. Uh, take care. Whatever happens in business and in life, I wish you nothing but success.